Hi everyone, welcome back. So I'm super excited. I have everything in front of me that I need to do the first part. And we're going to start our junk journal series today. Um, I'm going to be making three books. And as I showed you guys before, I've chosen three different sizes. And I've gone ahead and I've gutted each of the books because I've showed that um, a whole bunch of times. Um, in Facebook Lives and on YouTube as well, um, as to how to um, take your book apart without damaging your spine. So we're going to be doing three different books. And I'm going to let you guys know we're going to do one um, with Rust and Steampunk. And we're going to do one in Patina. And we're going to do one um, weathered wood sort of feel. So it's going to be a series that we're doing. And I'm going to use three of my digital kits. So the last three kits that I've done, that would be um, my mixed media backgrounds kit, kit two. I might even use a couple pages from the first kit. And um, the shabby chic roses. I want to use a few of those in my weathered journal. And I'm going to be using um, my industrial steampunk kit so I just wanted to share that um, I'm going to be using them different ways though so I've showed you guys basically how to take your kit put it into the book and then sort of decorate the back side and the front side of your pages I'm going to do something completely different with this um, series we're going to be doing more of um, collaging and it's going to have more mixed media pages so I just wanted to share that probably more like an art journal so I want to go ahead and we're going to get started. I have in front of me, so I'm going to show you all the supplies that you need. This here is a 130, it's very thick, 130 pound uh, piece of cardstock. I'm going to cut this up and we're going to use this to reinforce our spines. I have fabric tape in front of me. So you can use any fabric tape that you want. And if you don't have fabric, fabric tape, you can use an actual piece of fabric for your spine. Um, and I just would glue that to the back of your hidden sp hidden spine, and then you can attach it in place. Or you can use fabric tape. I have some Tim Holtz. Uh, playing vintage imagery, it says. Adhesive back fabric displaying vintage imagery. And just his fabric tape. So basically it's one with his numbers and that looks like faux tickets. And I have two sets here by 49 in Market. I have their fabric tape in... Sorry guys. Assorted Avesta fabric tape. Repositionable fabric tape. So I have them in some colors here. And then I have them in the Spectrum. And that's this one here with the, with the butterflies and these ones here. And I really liked um, this one with that sort of vibe. So I'm going to be going with one of those for my spines. And I'll probably use different ones for each one. So some sort of fabric or fabric tape. And then we want to have some sort of fabric that we're going to use to cover our journal. Now, I'm going to be doing a couple of different things. So we're going to completely cover the... So I've decided this is going to be our weathered journal, the smaller one. And I'm going to completely cover that in this fabric here from Seth Actor. And it looks like um, weathered wood or water. Um, it just has that sort of um, amazing feel to it. So we're going to use this one tonight for this journal and this one here we're going to completely cover it but then we're going to go ahead and we're going to layer on top of it whereas the other ones I'm not going to do it in one piece uh, especially with this one I'm so um when you're choosing your your journals or your I should say your books right what I've done is this one is already fabric so I'm not going to have to do anything to this one other than um add my mixed media pieces and start building it and jostling it as I go. So I just wanted to share that. So this is going to be perfect for my patina journal. 
and this one too. So these already have a cover, color, um, sorry, cover of paint. Um, I've gotten these from the secondhand store. Uh, they're very old books from the 1950s, and they had um, been glued together and done up in three sizes because the, the other one's too big. So there was three, this one, this one, and another one, and they were kind of stacked with lace on top, and it was sort of like a decorative thing. So anyways, I took them apart. So this has already been painted, as you can see with the gold paint there. So we're just going to go ahead, and so they did have fabric underneath. I have pulled off all the glue, uh, and I've pulled off um, anything that was stuck to the cover, so they're completely flat. And I'm just going to um, collage them and cover them as we go. So I just wanted to show that. The other thing that you're going to need is some sort of cutter or some sort of um, pair of scissors that you have for fabric. I have um, a circular cutter that I'm going to use for cutting my fabric and I have the safety on. And I'm going to be using Mod Podge and I'm going to be using Fabri-Tac. Why is my Fabri-Tac's here? There we go. I like to use Mod Podge when I'm adding um, that first layer of fabric to this part of the journal. It just helps everything stick down so you don't have air bubbles. So that's the whole point. We don't want to have any any air bubbles. And I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz ruler and I have a um, X-Acto knife by Fiskars. And then I have a brayer. This is not my good brayer for um, mixed media. This is a cheaper one that I bought that I don't really love. So this is just going to be using using it going forward for getting the air bubbles out. And then I have here the uh, book cover guide. So we're going to use this to trim up our fabric and I'll show you how to use this. I'm so excited. So it's going to help me get perfect cuts and corners. And of course I have my Tim Holtz scissors if I need them. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do before we get into doing fabrics and all of that we need to get our spine together. So I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure. And what I like to do is leave one eighth of an inch gap. So if I were making a book, I would easily go with this guide here. So this is not an eighth of an inch. This is more like, um, yeah, a quarter of an inch. You guys can see that. That is a quarter of an inch not an eighth of an inch. So that's okay. Um, that's great if you're making like a chipboard cover. But what I'm doing is repurposing old books. So in this event, I'm just going to want to leave one eighth of an inch gap. So this part's already done for me. It's like it's already together. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm going to leave one eighth of an inch gap on either side so that our book is able to close. And same with this side here. So I think one inch is going to be perfect because it's good on that side. And then one inch is right here, giving me the ability to um, close my journal. So I want to come over to my card stock and I'm going to want two of these. And I'm going to make two ticks at the bottom so you guys can see what I'm doing. Two ticks in here at the bottom. And I can yeah, line it all up. Perfect. So I want two ticks. Come on. There we go. My one inch mark. My one inch mark. Sorry, we're going to need three. And my one inch mark. Just like that. Now I'm going to grab my big paper trimmer, which is here, and I'm going to line these all up right in the middle, like that. One inch mark. Oh, it's being stubborn. It's because it's a lot of layers, so it's okay. If you have to use your scissors, you can use your scissors. There we go. I'm not too worried about how this looks because we're going to cover it. Okay, and then my one inch mark. Yep. 
right here. Sorry, guys. Move these out of the way for now. Perfect. I'll go back over that. There we go. And then the next one, make sure that's lined up. Right in the center. There we go. And the one at the back. Need to poke here. by a little bit and that's okay so the idea sorry guys, is that this is going to fit perfectly right in here Right between here okay, and here. There we go. And we're going to get a good fold up here and a good fold down there. So it's perfect. Okay. And then what we're going to want to do is go in. So I want to probably go in um, closer to the top, but leave about... Um, just a little bit more than eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna probably wanna come to here. So I just eyeball this. I don't really measure it. So the size of this journal is gonna be perfect. Right about there. Just like that. Now what I wanna do is take this one and I'm gonna take the next one and I'm just gonna eyeball them, line them up Exactly like that, with the same size, and I'm just going to give that a little trim right here to make them perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead, and I can take my fabric tack, I can take my Mod Podge, um, whatever we, we want to do. And I'm going to use my silicone brush. Here it is. All right, and I'm just going to use the matte mod podge. I don't like to use this in my mixed media, but I don't mind using it for um, putting my fabric down. And for, because um, it is a PVA glue, so I just wanted to share that. There we go, and I can get a really good coat on here. And the great thing, too, about Mod Podge is it does clean up easily off of a silicone brush. There we go. Just make sure I've got a really good coat on that. And then I can line these two up. Just like that. And they are perfect. Yep, and just shift them so they are perfect. Okay, and I have a little bit of hangover on this side. And that's okay. We're just going to line that up. Perfect. Okay. And then any little mess we make like this, we can just come in with our water and a paper towel and just wipe it up as we go. Just like that. See, and I have a little bit of ink on there too for my last project. So that's not something I'm going to want to get my um, fabric on either. There we go. And just give it a wipe and put it aside. There we go. So now we have our spine together. And you can um, use your own folder or your fingers or I'm just going to give this a little roll just like that with my brayer. Make sure we're all Nice and together. So that's really thick now. So I've used 130 pound cardstock twice to get the perfect size for my spine. And this part here, I'm going to want to use fabric tack because I do not want this to come out or to come loose. Here we go. 
And I do, guys, I don't feel bad about taking apart the old books. All of these I've bought in at secondhand stores, um, or I've bought them from the library in different places that literally, if you don't buy them, they go to the recycling bin. So I like to buy old books that nobody wants, and I give them new life. So that's the whole thing for me. We're repurposing something old to create something new and beautiful. And then I have the beautiful pages for mixed media and for um, all kinds of um, junk journal elements and things. So it's a lot of fun. Okay, this is being super stubborn. So I'm just going to finesse it and let it slowly come out as it is. I'm on probably the last half part of my bottle anyway, so I'm not too worried. It dries fairly quickly, but not so quickly that I have to um, worry about that. It is stubborn. There we go. I just haven't used it in a while. It is the best thing for adhering fabric, lace, textiles, trims, anything like that. There we go. So I have enough of it there now that I can come in and I can position my spine. So I want to pull this as flat as I can as possible. Sorry guys, I need to be able to see what I'm doing. Here we go. I'm going to drag the bottom into there so I'm sure to have it on the bottom end. That's what was there. And like a glue stick, you want to finesse this so that it heat activates with your fingers. So you get a really good stick with your fiber tack. There we go. And I'm only going to have to reinforce the top because I finessed the bottom into the fiber tack first. So my bottom is sticking perfectly. And you just want to make sure that nothing's coming up and it's all got a really good crease because you have to reinforce your spine so that your book has stability here we go yeah see i've got a little bit of unstick here and i can just use my fabric tack there and i have a little bit of unstick here there we go and i want to reinforce that which is the original tape to the book. Perfect. Okay. And I'm going to go through the whole entire process with you guys, step by step, so you can see exactly how I do this. And I've got, yeah, I've got a good section here, and I've got a good section there, just to show that. So I'm super happy. We've now reinforced our spine. So this has now given my spine back its shape. Because as you can see, when they're all sitting here, they're all kind of flimsy and they've lost their shape. So that gives it right back to them and it reinforces it. So, And that's the idea too, guys, when I'm taking apart books. I like to keep it all into a good condition. But if it doesn't, um, then absolutely you could um, cut off your spine, take the two sections of books, and then add your own spine. And you just have to build it up the same way with cardstock and fabric and glue the whole thing down. So it's the same method, just this is just taking out that step. So I just wanted to show that. Okay, now I have my spine in. The first one. And as I mentioned with this one, I want to completely cover this in fabric. So what we're going to do now, we're going to flip it over. I'm going to cover this whole thing from one side to the other in Mod Podge so that I get the good stick for my fabric. I'm going to move these out of the way so we have enough space. And I can position my fabric down exactly where I want it. So what I want to do is take my guide like this, okay, and put it here. So we're going to have an idea of how much fabric we're going to need at the side. So I'm just going to leave that right there, guys, so you can see. I hope you can see what I'm doing. That might be better. 
I still don't have my second device up, so I can't see the comments, but I'll comment after um, the video is over. So I just wanted to share that. Um, oh, same thing. I'm just going to use my silicone brush, so I'm not killing my paintbrushes. Here we go. So just a good, generous amount, and we're going to quickly cover it. Not worrying about gessoing it or anything like that. I just want a really good stick. I'm going to be adding stuff to the cover. This is just our base. So the base that I'm going to start out with is Seth Apter's fabric. So I just wanted to share that. And I'm using Mod Podge because it's a nice PVA glue. It's, it's not overly expensive. And this is going to be um, great for keeping out the air bubbles when I'm putting down the fabric. It's going to stick. And I'm not going to have air bubbles all over the place. So this prevents that. And then I use fabric tack on the inside to tack the whole thing together. And you can use any PVA glue. I just, I get the small bottles for $1.25 at my dollar store, opposed to the big bottles costing um, $30 on Amazon. So I just wanted to share that. Use what you have and what you prefer. My go-tos for bookbinding are the matte Mod Podge and um, fabric tack. So I just wanted to share that. And I have a little bit of bumpy on the front cover, and that's just going to give me some texture. So I'm kind of excited for that. So I'll show you guys as we go what this is all going to look like. Okay, so I'm good with that. That's a really good coat. And now quickly, I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to position my fabric. That's got like a little bit of drying time, so I'm not worried about being too quick. Okay, so now I want to figure out, do I want horizontal lines or vertical lines? Let's see here. And I'm going to start in one corner and work my way down. And I'm thinking vertical lines. And there's a spot here, yeah, that's already being, um, here we go. So, and when positioning this, I want to make sure, if you guys can see that, one sec, that I'm leaving enough room with this in the corner. So I'm going to hug this in now. Okay. I don't mind if I get glue on it. I can always take it off later. And I want to position this where I'm up here, right at this corner, and this edge. So that's probably good. I don't want to go overboard where it's too much. And then I don't want to be... Um, yeah, I don't want to pull this completely straight. Across. And this is where my brayer is going to be awesome. Because I can brayer the whole thing down. See, right across my spine, into all my corners, and get the whole thing matted flat and straight. And I can just keep finessing it. Okay? Now I want to heat activate it also with my hands, just by guiding it into the grain of the, of the book. Okay. And my, my little toes there. There, so I've got like a really good measurement on there now where I'm not wasting fabric, so that's perfect. And this is your chance to, to work out any air bubbles that you have um, while your fabric tack is, is uh, like, well, it's tacky before it dries. So you just want to make sure that you have a really good stick and you're not going to have any air bubbles. Okay, so I'm just going to work that in. I'm absolutely loving this fabric. It is absolutely gorgeous. Okay. 
伸びてね。And this just takes a good minute or two. I can already feel that it's starting to dry. And that's what we want, a really good stick. And then it's going to go like that, right across my journal. So that's why I love a bit of fat quarter, guys. I'm probably going to get um, at least two or three journals out of this. So I'm super excited. And that's doing it this way. Um, you can use it in bits and pieces and do all kinds of stuff. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so I know where to cut my fabric. So see, I've done that perfectly here. So this is where I'm going to want to cut my fabric, right along this line here. And it'll go to, to here. So I don't want to do that on my glass media mat. I have a multi... Uh, purpose self-healing cutting mat over here I've got mixed media all over it but it is self-healing so that's what it's for just have to move a couple things sorry guys and then I'll get this on top of here okay and we can slide it right underneath ah, it's stuck to my desk here we go I'm going to move that. Oh, sorry for the awful noise, guys. And then here we go. So that's my Recollections Self-Healing Cutting Mat. You can use whatever you have. So essentially, I want to be on top of here when I'm cutting fabric. And the great thing, too, this is uh, metal, so I can use this as a guide. And I just have to rotate it. And I'll show you what I mean by rotate it. Okay, so I'm here. And I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take my pizza cutter and I'm going to turn off the, the safety. I'm going to hold it like that. And I'm going to turn this on an angle. So this is completely in front of me. So I know I'm not fully in focus, but this just makes sense from where I'm sitting. Okay, and I want to yeah, come as close. Sorry, guys, to this edge here. As I can. There we go. And my fabric is cut here. And cut here. Okay. Then, I'm going to do the same thing here, if you guys can see that. I just have to go like that. And nice and slowly, we're not in a race, because I find if I go nice and slow, and I'm not rushing, and I'm not... Um, putting any kind of pressure on myself, I find that um, that's when I make um, less errors and um, less mistakes when it comes to fabric. So I just wanted to share that. And I mentioned to you guys too, you know, I might look like a pro like I'm doing this, but I don't have a lot of experience with fabrics. And um, I have more experience with paper. So I've been making journals now for mm, since 20, late 2017, early 2018. So um, this is the extent of my, of me using fabrics. So I just wanted to share that. I'm not a total beginner, but I'm still not um, comfortable like some of our pros. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, and then I want to move this uh, to this corner here, just like that. So see, I'm going to do it this way, guys. So it doesn't matter as long as I have that edge, right? Here we go. Just like that. Okay. And then 
just to get that spot right here between here and here I can go right like that perfect okay and then I have this piece here for um, more journals pieces bits whatever I'd like so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold that up. Yep, just like that. And I'm going to put that aside. Okay, and I should be perfect now. So let's flip it over and see what we're doing. So I'm super happy with that, guys. If you can see that. So already perfect straight edge pretty much. I mean, it's not perfect. Like I said, guys, I'm not a pro at this. And I'm super happy. That guide literally just made my life easier as to determine how much space of fabric I should leave at the side. And now we're going to use this together. So I'm super excited. And I have a little guide in front of me. So it shows for the inside of the book like this. So then what we're going to do... So this shows us two. Um, yeah, and see, mine are much thinner because mine are an eighth of an inch gap, not the, sorry guys, not the um, quarter of an inch, but these are. And then we're going to line these up like this. Um, yeah, it shows like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, if you guys can see that, so this overlaps, but that's fine because this is a much larger book. Um, I think, too, that this was um, geared for really small books. I've seen a lot of people who are using this are using teeny tiny books, and I don't really do tiny, tiny books. I do, like, bigger books. So this is perfect, guys, and it's still, even though my book's ginormous, like, compared to the small books that they were using it for, um, it still works perfect. So I just wanted to share that. So do I think this is a must have tool for anybody bookmaking? Absolutely. As you guys can see, this is giving me perfect measurements, corners. Like, see guys, that's perfect. And I'm going to be able to cover this now without having any kind of issue in my corner. I'm super happy. So same thing. We're going to come over here to this side and we're going to measure it up just by putting our little bookend into this little triangle spot right here. I'm going to hold that, use my cutter, and don't throw it any of your scraps. We can use all of these little bits and pieces for something else. Oh, like look at how fabulous they are. We can use them for layering and for things. Okay. And then we have here. Again, beautiful and it's giving me the perfect amount of room for each side okay we'll just make sure that sits over top just like that okay perfect and then we're going to be able to yeah to do the corners and the corners like that. So I'm super happy. Okay. So I'll just put the safety, I've turned it back off, and then I'm putting the safety on so I can't um, hurt myself on that. Oh, okay. So, and then this also shows, I'm um, using it like this to corner around. So I didn't do that to any of my any of my corners, so I just wanted to show that. That's just an extra step if you want your um, corners to be corner-rounded. I didn't do that. To me, that's perfect. And this here is going to give us a guide, too. So if you guys can see this right here. So if I were going to do a closure that is on an elastic, when you match this part here up to the corner, that's going to give you the perfect spot for your elastic closure. And the same thing when you do that here. 
so that's your elastic closure, the perfect spot. So I just wanted to share that. So that's the other thing about this little guide here. And again, that's for doing your, um, on a, on a, like an album or like, um, um, a chipboard book. Okay. So now what I want to do is pick a washi tape. This one's sort of like weathered wood, sort of. So I, I'm thinking this one. If you guys can see that, it's very subtle and very light. It has some script writing on it. And it's like um, beiges and it's um, like a very, very, very light green. And this is from the um, Avesta Sorted Collection from 49 and Market. So I'm going to go ahead. So this is going to be a hidden spine. So I just wanted to show that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to layer this. So I'm going to put, um, sorry guys. I'm going to put a layer of PVA down. Okay, I want to move those over here. There we go. Alright, I want a layer of PVA right along here. And right along here. This book is going to be a hidden spine, and the other two books are going to be um, stitched spines. One I'm going to use wax thread, and the other I'm going to use um, a leather cord thread. So I just wanted to share that, so I'm going to show you those different methods of, um, of book binding. There we go. So we're going to offset this right along here. Here we go. And I'm going to snip this. I'm just going to grab my Tim Holtz scissors. Here we go. And I'm going to snip that right about here. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to do it good. Um section right about here and this is just to help reinforce the spine right about there and again this is fabric tape from 49 and market I want to pull that tight there we go and I'm going to put a whole section right here in the center. And we're not going to see this anyways. It's going to be covered on the inside by probably a piece of paper, like um, paper on the inside. And then our spine, because it's a hidden spine, uh, that's why I have cut another one. So I'll probably end up cutting two more of these and then attaching them in here. Probably another, another one, because that'll be two. And that's how we'll attach them. We're going to attach our signatures to here. And then we're going to glue this in place over here. And I would do the same thing. I would cover this in a, in a, we'll do that now, just to show you guys exactly. I will put that aside. Because um, we're not in a position right now to um, stitch the signatures in. We're going to wait to do that until the books are actually together. And I've got some of the covers done. So I just wanted to show that. Um, sewing the signatures in for these will probably be one of the final steps because I want to even do some different stuff and show you different ways that you can um, work on your signatures outside of the book. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, I got to get that down because it's shifting on me and we don't want that shifting. Nope, nope. There we go. Okay. So I probably shouldn't even be moving this until it's dry. Move that back like that. There we go. That's it. We want this to dry completely flat and have our creases, yeah, just like that. We could even take our, our paintbrush like this and our paintbrush like that. 
just to go into the creases here. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to completely dry now. And while that's drying, I'll put that aside, just right here. And we're going to take this one, and we're going to cover it in our Mod Podge. Actually, what we could do first, just so we can just do it all in one shot. Um, I dropped my piece of cardstock. Sorry guys, I'm caught in a cord. There we go. Okay. So again, I'm going to cut this at the one inch mark. So I'm going to put this in at the one inch mark. Because I know that my spine's one inch. Instead of measuring it out. And there we go. Okay, perfect. See, that two should do it for the inner part of the. Of the. There. Okay, so we're going to take these and we're going to glue them together. I'm using a silicone brush from Prima. And I can't recommend this enough, guys. It washes up super easy, so you're not wrecking and damaging your paintbrushes. When you use texture paste, mixed media, Mod Podge, gel medium, and all that fun stuff. And it helps eliminate a lot of the mess. So just wanted to show that. There we go. Now I can glue these two together. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. I know that this measurement for one inch is perfect. I'm just going to... There we go. And put the two together the best. There. The best way there. And then I can measure this out again. So this is going to be my hidden spine. And then we're going to bring our... Um, once I get rid of this Mod Podge here... Okay, I no longer need the self-healing cutting mat because we're not cutting anything anymore. That was just for when I needed to cut the fabric. So that all my cuts went into this instead of going into my table or my glass media mat. Okay, I'm going to move that over here for now. Okay, now I can come back with this one and with this one so we know this is our hidden spine and I just want to measure this out that that should be yeah that's all glued now so right in here it's going to be perfect and we're going a little bit in and a little bit into about here I'm just going to eyeball that so about here all right cut it and then when we position it it should be perfect Still a little bit long. I'd rather cut off a little bit than too much. So that's kind of my philosophy with that. Oh, and then it doesn't feel, see, it doesn't feel even here either. So I'm going to trim that. There we go. That's better because I want that to be in just a little bit so we're not, uh, this part here is not hanging over the edge. So I just wanted to show that. So we have our washi tape there, and I just need to trim my washi tape a little bit more straight on this side. We're still wet here, so that's still drying. There we go. I just want it to look symmetrical. Perfect. So when we go to do this, it's going to sit right in here like that, and I can do this the same color or contrasting. So I'm probably just going to do it the same color just so it all blends and meshes well together. And I want to cut my piece of washi tape like that to be perfect and this is awesome because it's one inch so that's excellent just like that and I'll show you my little trick okay so we've got this measuring this perfectly like that I'll reposition it one more time just so that we know it's perfect that's just off a tiny bit 
Come on. There we go. And I'll show you my little trick. So now what I would do is just peel this part up to about the center because I know it's perfect. And I'm just going to grab my PVA glue. There we go. And I'm just going to do this side first. Like that. And I'm going to stick it down. It moved. There we go. So that whole side is stuck down. And then we're going to go this side to the middle. Right there. From where we glued. Yep. And we're just going to add more. Like that. And we're going to push that down. Perfect. There, so now we're ready for our hidden spine. So that is perfect. All right, we've got so much done tonight, guys. Now I just want to taper up the book, and we'll call it a night. And we can come back on Friday. So essentially what I want to do is get all these covers done and all these spines put in. And then we can continue our series book by book. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So I know this seemed kind of tedious, but it helps anybody that's new or anybody that's struggling to make a journal. And then we're just going to fold up our sides. So see guys, by doing that, this is all down and it's all smooth and I don't have any air bubbles. So that's why I love using the Mod Podge because I find it's the best way to get your, um, your fabric to stick to your journal without giving you um, any spots where it's coming up. And then essentially I love Fabri-Tac to glue all this down and to tack it down because this is going to give you the best stick and this is where you pull everything tight. So I just wanted to share that's why I'm doing this. I just need a pokey tool here. All right, this is my other little thing. If my Fabri-Tac is giving me grief, I just come in with my... Stamp our secret weapon. You can use your all. And I just reinforce that. It might have some gunk stuck. There. And I just pull it off so it's not interfering with my all or my pokey tool. Whatever you want to call it. This one here is a stamper secret weapon. And I have the one um, with the kit that I'll be using when we sew the signatures in. So I'll use that one for this. And then it's up to you. You can do the side. I think I'm going to do the sides first. And then I'll flip the bottom. Just for a more um, polished look. So I'm just going to flip this part up. Sit it here. There we go, guys. That's better. There we go. And I want to get the crease in here of the actual cover. And then I want to go to the top and come in a good inch. H uh, half an inch. Sorry, guys. Yeah, it's half an inch here. It's not. And then I want to hit the edge of this fabric because this fabric is going to be longer than my, than my half inch. So I just want to make sure that we're hitting our full corner here. Okay. Then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to pull and I'm doing like a pull push sort of method and I'm going to use my fingers and I'm going to just keep pushing it up just like that and as you can see I have perfect corners so I'm super excited because that's the part that I struggle with guys getting those corners perfect sometimes that they don't want to um they don't want to um cooperate that you've cut it too long or you've cut it too short. So with that guide, my corners are now going to be perfect. So I think that for that reason alone, it's essential. And I think it's a good to tool to have if you're somebody who's new to, to book binding or journal making. I think it's essential. So um, if you if you can grab one from Where Are Memories Keepers, I purchased that one from um, the Paper and Ink Boutique in Calgary. So I just wanted to share that again. So that's where I got that one from. And yeah, it's absolutely essential. 
and you can, as I've shown, you can do any size of book with that. Um, I watched um, a quick tutorial too um, from their from their designers as to um, how they're using it, and they're making little books. So as you guys can see from this, I'm not. I'm making big books, and it works perfectly either way. So I just wanted to let you guys know that and what I thought of it. And as you can see, my corners are all perfect. So I am super excited. And then I'm not wasting my fabric. And that's the other thing, too. When you have it where it's jagged and it's too much or it's um, not enough, you're wasting fabric. And then you might have to pull your cover off and have to redo the whole thing again. So I just wanted to share that I am super happy um, with, with this tool. I can't recommend it enough. And again, guys, it's here. And it's called the... Five in one book cover guide, and it comes like that. And it comes in pink and it comes in this um, uh, mint color, so you get the choice of what color you want it in either pink or mint. And it's great, and it's metal, so like you can use it with your cutters. So I'm super excited with that. Um, if it were plastic, I'd have a real hard time using um my um fabric cutting tool with it so um that's perfect that it's metal so i just wanted to let you guys know i'm super excited for that and then i'm going to go ahead and glue my two sides so i want to make sure that i'm gluing uh hold on guys there we go stubborn stubborn it's almost time for a new bottle there we go Again, right along that edge right here. Okay. Um, and then I want to glue like right along here. Yeah, right along here. Up to about half inch, which is about here. So see again, I didn't mind what the bottoms looked like. They just couldn't hang over. And that's why, because I have... Um, this piece of fabric coming up so they're going to be perfect on either end and the only thing we're going to see is about um, from there over and I like this frayed edge this is just going to give me a little bit of character in my journal so it's up to you you could have clean ends on every side or um, or this edge and um, I don't think we're going to see it anyways because I am going to put fabric or paper or something on the inside so here we go perfect corner right there yeah if you pull it straight <laughs> yeah there we go right like that come on and you want to make sure that we finesse it up and we're pulling the whole thing completely straight and completely in okay straight yep and in and just keep finessing it up. There we go. And my roller. There we go. Yep. There we go. Have that pulled right here just a little bit. Perfect. All right, here we go. I got fabric tack over my fingers. Sorry, guys. And then we have this last side to do. Uh, we've made so much progress tonight. I am super happy. There we go. We've got pretty much the first journal together. The um, the bones of it, anyway. Okay. And then again, I'm gonna use my fabric tack right along this whole corner here. And you know what? I think maybe let's try this. Doing half at a time. Because that's was kind of yeah difficult on the other side so let's get one side perfect here we go like that and then we can do the other half once we get this side all down because it just dries so quickly okay pull that all in yeah i am super happy with that if you guys can see and I'm going to pull it all up and even, working out all any air bubbles. I still have one right here. There we go. 
go. It's not like dealing with paper, guys. It's um, because your fabric constantly moves on you. There we go. We want this as tight as possible. So then that's perfect. And I can just come right over here and I can glue my edge right down here, just like that. And my sides and my top right there. Perfect. And we'll come here and we'll pull it and finesse it. Here we go. And there we have it. Our book is together. It is completely seamless. I have texture here from that glue stuff underneath. Super happy. And it's completely stuck down. And it looks great on the inside. There was no um, fuss with that. It all matches up. It's even. So I'm super happy, guys. That tool has made a huge difference for me. And anyone that's watched my journal tutorials will tell you that my cuts on the inside were a hot mess. So, I mean, you couldn't tell because I had um, other stuff covering it. Because, I mean, essentially that's what we do. We put down, um, uh, I got something here. Yeah, essentially what we do is we put down like our, our digital like this or some kind of paper or fabric with there. You're not seeing the edges anyways. All you're going to see is like an edge like this. So I just wanted to share. That's how, you know, it looks. But underneath, everyone could see that this was a mess for me. So for me, this is tidier. And um, going forward, it's perfect. And I'm going to start using that tool just to make sure everything lines up and it's perfect. And then again, guys, my spine like this is going to sit right here in the center. So that looks nice and clean. I'm super happy. And we're going to attach our signatures to this one. And we're going to put probably maybe a little uh, decorative, uh, maybe even just some just some cheesecloth or something. And we'll uh, attach we will attach this one in here like that. And then we'll attach our signatures to this spine. And we'll cover this. And, I'll, and we'll do our cover and we'll decorate the cover. So essentially what I want to do um, is just prep the covers and the insides of the books and get everything pretty much ready to go. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to, um, to do another one live or if you want me just to catch everything up to this point, like in terms of um, getting the spine in. Because um, I can do that. I can skip that part if you guys don't want to see that. I can do it off camera. And then just focus on the covers and what I'm doing on the inside panels with you guys. And then, of course, signatures and how I put everything together. So I just wanted to share that. Let me know. And uh, we'll, we'll continue this on Friday. So I'm super happy with the progress we just made, guys. We have our first journal pretty much um, the bones of it together. So I'm excited. And see this. It's really nice. Like that. It sits really great. Just gonna let the whole thing sit flat and let it dry because that's yeah there we go that crease there has to has to happen yep and let it dry overnight so everything's nice and flat and good to go all right thanks guys i will be back on friday and we'll continue with this thank you so much and have a wonderful night thanks everyone bye